Hey everybody who's found this YouTube channel from my main channel. I've always had it hidden off to the side, but I've never really considered doing anything over here. I figured I might as well just make a quick video and throw it up. I'm doing some heat treating today. I've got a piece of O1 in here. It's ridiculously cold out here. I got the heater going, which explains the uh, hissing in the background. I'll probably turn that off in a second, but I've got some O1 in the oven. It's soaking now. Next thing I gotta do is uh, preheat my oil. Um, I'm using Parks AAA. It's a, I guess it's what they call a medium speed oil. Uh, with O1, you can get away with a slightly slower oil uh, because you have you have more time to drop the temperature under that pure light nose. Um, so that's what I'm using. One thing that I gotta do um, is straighten the camera here. One thing that I do have to do in the new shop is I'm gonna be building some bigger quench tanks because that's really the limit, um, or, or that's what's limiting me as far as how big a blades I can do because. What I'm using now are just old paint cans and, you know, they're, I don't really know exactly how deep they are, but they're maybe nine, nine and a half inches. And I like to get something where I can submerge the whole blade in there and see if that helps with the warping. Um, some people say it does, some people say it doesn't. I don't know. Um, anyway, I've got another 15 minutes until this is done. We're, uh, I'm going to be soaking this for 20 minutes at 1475. This is a piece of uh, eighth inch thick O1. Um, manufacturer recommends a 30 minute soak time, but I believe that's for at least an inch of thickness. So, um, you know, 20 minutes at 1475 is, you know, that's plenty uh, to dissolve all that carbon, at least from the research that I've done and from the testing that I've done. I guess the next thing is, is we'll wait for this to heat up. I'll preheat my oil and we'll do the quench. You know, after going over a bunch of manufactured data sheets, they actually recommend a hot oil. Uh, I believe in the three to 400 degree range, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, I can kind of see why they recommend that for some complex parts um, in that it would hopefully help reduce the chances of cracking. Um, with knife blades, I think O1 is usually pretty stable unless you've got some crazy stuff going on. Um, but in my experience, uh, I haven't had, you know what, I'm not even going to say it, but well, actually I am going to say it because otherwise this isn't going to make sense. I haven't had uh, any O1 blades crack on me ever knock on wood. Um, hopefully this isn't one of those, although it would kind of make an interesting video. So the temperature that I'm going to heat this oil to is going to be 150. Um, you know, manufactured data sheets are one thing, but I think once you start getting into uh, doing your own experimentation and uh, stuff like that, you begin to realize what works best for you. Um, and every single piece of O1 that I've quenched has come out ridiculously hard. So I don't uh, or I do believe that I am getting full hardness with all of the uh, the old one that I've, I've quenched or at least close to it So that's what I'm gonna keep doing at least until I can get a hardness tester and continue on with that testing So after running the heater for like 10 minutes it gets up to like 50 in here, but it's actually like 19 degrees outside Which is uh, pretty cold It's actually uh, a lot warmer in here too because that oven puts out some heat Um, doesn't put out a lot of heat though. I mean even when this thing has been going for a while You can almost still touch the top of it. Um, I wouldn't do that if it's sitting here at like 1900 degrees for a couple hours But just doing a simple O1 heat treatment the, the outside of this doesn't even get really that hot Actually, you know, I think the place where I bought this AAA from actually gypped me out on like maybe six or eight ounces of the uh, oil this is a gallon paint can and uh, I believe they fill this type of a container uh, with with uh, with oil from much larger barrels, and then ship that out. So basically, they repackage it, um, and I, I think they jipped me out of several ounces of oil, which is ridiculous because this stuff is like 60 bucks a gallon. Problem is, is I don't know where else to find this other than the place that I bought it from. I suppose I could call the manufacturer and see if they'll ship me some, which I might end up doing because it might save me some money. As always, we got the sirens in the background. Hopefully we won't have a ton of noise like that in a new, a new shot. 
yeah, I'm thinking about, I didn't take this hood off because they look ridiculous. Um, so I'm thinking about uh, starting this YouTube channel here. I'm probably going to rename it and uh, start uploading maybe short videos like this to uh, uh, this YouTube channel um, because, you know, I like uploading more produced videos over on the Outdoors 55 channel and spending a little bit more time on them. Um, I could always do these style of videos over there, but, um, you know, this is kind of a little bit more informal, I think. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do because everything's going to end up changing a little bit uh, once we make the big move. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm definitely going to probably change the name of this YouTube channel um, and start loading or start uploading some stuff over here. Uh, just stuff that doesn't really fit an entire video. Um, I don't know. We'll just kind of play it by ear at this point, I guess. But um, yeah, if you're one of those people who've uh, come over or found this YouTube channel from my main channel, um, let me know what your thoughts are. Would you like to see some of these uh, kind of more informal videos over here on this channel? Or uh, let me know what you think. We have another seven minutes of soaking time, so I'll just go ahead and shut this off for now because we're almost there. So yeah guys, this is kind of like the reality of knife making, um, especially down here in my shed because I only have power available to run one thing at the same time. So I can't run my oven here and also my grinder. I can't run both of those things at the same time, um, which basically leads to a lot of wasted time over the course of a day. Um, I temper inside my uh, home kitchen oven at this point. It would be nice to have another one of these uh, specifically for tempering. I'm not sure if I'm going to try and make one or just bite the bullet and buy another one. Um, these things tend to hold their value from what I understand. Um, if, I ever, if I ever did need to sell a lot of this stuff for, for whatever reason, if I decided to get out of knife making completely and drop the whole thing, um, I should be able to get most of my money back out of this stuff. Um, I'll probably, I'm definitely going to lose some for shipping because shipping this kind of stuff around is expensive. Um, but a lot of people seem to be willing to just make the drive sometimes. So, um, you know, as long as this stuff works, it seems to hold its value fairly well. But yeah, guys, this is, this is the exciting part of knife making here. Um, you know, I try and make it a little bit more interesting over on the, on the main channel and it is. It really is, uh, but this kind of stuff, waiting for ovens to heat up and, um, you know, because I got to take this inside and let it sit in an oven for two hours. Actually, I got to let it sit in the oven for four hours. It's two cycles at two hours each. Um, and I might, I may even run a third cycle on this. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet, but, um, whether or not a third, uh, third tempering cycle really adds any benefits is kind of up in the air. Most manufacturers will recommend two. Um, occasionally they'll recommend three depending on the steel type. Um, with O1, I haven't found, um, I believe there's two major manufacturers of O1 and I haven't really found um, that either of those manufacturers recommend more than two tempering cycles, which basically tells me that it, there's not a whole lot of benefits after the third cycle. So. Um, anyway, this is, uh, we're about four minutes out, so I'm going to get set up for, uh, quenching and we'll quench this blade. Always wear eye protection, especially when you're doing stuff like this, because you never know when you're going to get a flame up or what, you know, hot oil splashes and stuff. Always wear eye protection. I probably don't say that enough in my, uh, my main videos on Outdoors 55, but yeah, it's, you, you don't want to lose these. Um, I always get... A comment every now and then people telling me that the glasses they go under the hat like this as opposed to this over the hat but personally I think this looks just as silly as this plus my ears stay warmer when my glasses are on the outside I know it looks stupid this way but I think it kind of looks goofy this way too I don't know which is the uh, correct way to wear glasses with a hat on so I just ran up to the house, uh, turned the oven on to 400, so that'll be preheated. I like to get this quenched. I literally ran, I'm out of breath, um, which, because I'm out of shape, haven't run in like, well, way too long. But I like to get this from the oil to the tempering oven as fast as possible. I don't want to put a knife in my oven that has a bunch of Parks AAA on it. 
Um, so what I'll do is I'll uh, quench it, then I'll leave it submerged in this um, hot oil, um, which will be, probably be around 180 degrees by the time it's uh, by the time it's quenched and everything. Um, then once it's cooled to around that temperature, I'll pull it out. I will wrap it in paper towels and run up and wash it off in as hot a water as I have, which is around 130 degrees. Um, that way the blade doesn't drop under 120 degrees at any time. Um, then it'll go right into the oven. So hopefully this camera doesn't overheat on me. This is my smaller little mini camera. We're quenchy time. We're at about 25 minute soak time. The nice thing about O1 is that you really can't over soak it uh, up to a point, you know, 20 to 30 minutes, uh, you should be good. O1 is pretty resistant to decarburization, so um, that shouldn't be an issue. See what I mean? My uh, tank isn't quite big enough to get the whole blade in there, so most likely I'm gonna get a tiny little warp right there where that oil line is. And see that? I don't know if you can tell on the video, but there's a nice light gray color on that blade, which is a good sign. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and leave this in the oil and get some ventilation in this place. See right now my oil's at around 200 and 30 degrees. Um, I believe my oil temperature was probably around 180 when I started. This thing isn't always reliable. I need to get a reliable heat gun. This thing, it'll sometimes read like 30 degrees when it's like 500 degrees. That's good. We'll let that sit in there for a minute um, and let that, uh, you know, at 200 degrees, we're right in the range where we want to be. That'll um, slowly, fully convert to Martin Sight. And we'll take that out of the oil in a minute or so and uh, up to the oven for tempering. Some of you guys have asked me why I don't temper in this oven here. Um, and the, the reason that I don't is because uh, it takes forever to cool down. Um, we're still at like 1200 degrees right now. Um, this will probably take a good 40 minutes for this to get down to 400 degrees. So um, by that time our blade's going to be... Um, cooled off unless we have a way to keep that in the 200 to 250 degree range um, For the course of that cool down period which if you Keep your oil heated to that temperature you could probably do that um, the longer You know essentially the longer you can keep this blade in the 200 or so degree range The better off you're gonna be you're gonna get more of that Martin Siddick conversion. We're, we're probably is, see, we're, we're already starting to cool down to around 200. Um, so what I'm going to do now is take this out. I'm going to wipe it off super quickly with some paper towels. And I'm going to take this off or take the blade out, run up to the house, rinse it in as hot a water as I have, which will be in the 130, 135 degree range. And then it will go straight into the oven. So at no point will this blade be under 125 degrees. At least that is, that's the plan. That's how I try and do it. I'm going to lay this out to wrap the bleed in. Wipe some of this oil off here. It still looks pretty straight, which is good. We got to get moving here. This will hopefully help insulate it a little bit till we get it to the sink. So I've got this thing in the oven now. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, get yourself a good oven temperature thermometer thingy and uh, monitor your oven temperature. Um, this will be in here for two hours. Let me turn the light on here. Where's oven light? It'll be in there for uh, two hours for or two cycles to two hours each. Um, we brought it up here, wa washed it under like 130 degree water. It was still so hot that I couldn't even touch it um, comfortably. So we're definitely over that 125 degree mark when we brought it up here and washed it off. And at no point that I believe that bleed dropped under 125 degrees, which is a good thing. 
All right guys, got the blade tempered up. We did two two hour cycles at 400 degrees on the nose. So it's a fairly aggressive temper for 01 tool steel, but I haven't had any problems with it yet and I've done a ton of testing and it seems to hold up just fine. I don't think that anybody would ever be able to break one of these blades in this direction, meaning like that, uh, in their lifetime. I've tried. Um, I have a big giant metal hammer here that I've tried to break these with and I haven't been able to do it yet. Now, some of you may have noticed already, and I didn't mention this yet, but there's no through holes drilled in here for the epoxy to flow through. Now, I didn't get a single warp in this blade. This blade is as flat and as straight as it is now. Did I say that backwards? This blade is as flat and as straight now as it is when it first went into the oven. Um, zero warps. I checked it on the granite surface plate and it is golden. Um, for a long time, I thought that the warping was caused by the oil line and it didn't make sense to me because that shouldn't affect, that shouldn't induce a warp. Um, that easily. Um, yeah, there's going to be a temperature differential there, but that temperature differential should be spread out farther up along the handle and it really shouldn't cause a warp right there. But one thing that I did not take into consideration is that what's also in this same general area most of the time are a bunch of through holes. And uh, with the steel not being exactly the same on this side versus this side versus here versus here that could cause some interesting stresses in the steel and lead to a warp. Um, this is kind of speculation at this point because I can't say for certain, but I do think it's awfully strange that the first blade that I do without through holes comes out completely flat and completely straight. Now you may be wondering, is that going to affect the uh, handle bond strength and it's not because this is getting uh, three loveless bolts. It's not getting pins and loveless bolts actually screw together and clamp. Basically, they clamp the blade in place with epoxy. Um, I'm also going to hollow out the center here with a two inch wheel. So epoxy will be able to um, sit in there and grab a hold and all that other good stuff. I still might be able to drill a through hole in the ends here. Uh, but I'm not worried about this handle coming off because those loveless bolts are no joke. Um, and they're actually not that hard to use. I'll probably end up doing a video on uh, a quick video on that on my other YouTube channel at some point. Maybe even a quick video here uh, discussing it in further detail. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, I also wanted to talk about uh, going back to the tempering thing. Uh, 400 degrees with 01 to fairly aggressive temper. This also has a fairly aggressive angle on it, or it will by the time I'm done finish grinding it. Um, it's going to be 12 degrees per side, uh, 24 degrees, um, you know, with these angles in relation to each other. And uh, that's a fairly steep angle for a bushcraft knife with a Scandi grind. Um, I'm going to do probably a separate quick video on that on this channel, just discussing some uh, edge geometry issues a little bit. And uh, Hopefully this video was kind of entertaining, kind of interesting. Hopefully somebody got something from it. Let me know what you guys think of these style of videos, these kind of informal um, videos, because a lot of times I have a lot of stuff I want to talk about, but I don't really feel like I have enough material to cover a, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end video on the other YouTube channel. Uh, maybe I'm going to reconsider that. I'm not sure. I'll probably do some informal stuff like this. Just, you know, bring the camera around and talk to myself all day because that's essentially what I'm doing. Um, let me know what you guys thoughts are. Um, maybe this is kind of a beta test to see how, uh, how it would go over on the uh, Outdoors 55 channel. Cause man, you upload something that is kind of different over there and people, people get all, uh, all upset. Like, ah, oh, I didn't expect this video, <laughs> but anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, Give me a subscribe here. We're definitely probably going to produce more content for this YouTube channel in the future. Um, it might not be completely knife related. We'll have to see. Yeah, subscribe, like, do all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.